Hey, welcome to the vault. Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. He's a level three whiskey sommelier. He's a mooch in training. Yes, yes. And today, today, Daniel. Yeah, new plan. This, this day in Rex month. Yes. So we know in Rex month I can do whatever the hell I want. Mm -hmm. And how has your experience been so far? Uh, it's been fun. I enjoy it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's surprisingly, maybe a little unnervingly okay. Like. The longer it stays okay, the more worried I get. Are you I complaining get. that it's just too okay? That it's just too non-violent, non-chaotic? Look, if someone in your life never gives you presents, and then one day they buy you 12, <laughs> your first reaction is not, hey, presents. Your first reaction is, what did you do? I think you're entirely, <laughs> entirely too suspicious. The only thing that you should take away from this month so far is yes. that when I am put in charge, it's all good. All good. Good things happen. People learn. Yeah. You get so, to you get to enjoy whiskeys with your with your Sami friends. Yeah. People get a variety of content. We mix it up. And speaking of mixing it up, there's one thing I've wanted to do for a very very long time. Yes. You because wanted to start a show with tasting nuts. <laughs> <laughs> So, so for hundreds and hundreds of episodes, what have been what's been the, the beats, the formats, what's been the sequence? As far as I can figure, intro, introduce the whiskey and thank somebody for giving it, talk a lot about the whiskey, maybe drink the whiskey, possibly review it, right. read comments, right. make a joke and give it the toast. Right. So, we're going to switch up that sequence a little bit. <laughs> it's a little experiment. Yeah. See how we like it. Yeah. Right? Again, just a delicate touch. Delicate touch. When I put in charge, things are fine. I, see, I imagine there's gonna be a lot of people on this channel who are not huge fans of Rex, who are going to find themselves in a weird internal struggle, <laughs> where they dislike Rex being in charge, but simultaneously he keeps doing some things. He keeps doing things they love. <laughs> How do you deal with that uh, emotionally? I hate that person, but I love what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna start with. Yes. The, the, now we're starting with. First impressions of a whiskey, and I'm sure you know what it is. I don't know what it is. Unless you're going to have Emma. No, I'm going to have Tommy or somebody start Ooh. putting these things in tube socks. Okay. Now, hold on. No, 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 no. I'll know them ahead of time, but I'll only know, like, the three. So I'll, I'll be choosing okay. between which three it is. Okay, because you do research. Yeah. Let's not pretend you don't. No, no, I do research, but I won't. It'll just, I'm trying to, at least of three or four, however many videos we shoot, I won't quiet no. No, not today. Now, today I know what it is. No, for the longest... But you won't know what it is For yet. the longest time... That's not true. I've wanted to add a couple of elements to our reviews. Mm -hmm. Those elements are trying the whiskeys with a little bit of water mm -hmm. and trying the whiskeys with some ice. Let's do your stories, which the people are so fond of. At the end. Because they're drunk. They're so fond of these stories because, because they've drunk. lost all better judgment. Uh, they really like these stories. But let's just save them... For the end. Okay. And everything leading up to that, we're going to focus on the whiskey. We're going to try it with the different things. And when we, when it's story time, I think we sit down. We just have a nice seat. Where? We'll figure that out when we okay. get there. Okay. So first things first. Oh, you pour me some already. Mm -hmm. Okay. First impressions. Here we go. So this is scotch for sure. Yeah. And it's sherry cask. Definitely. This is dark, rich fruit. Yeah. This is plum. This is... Figs. It's bready though. Yeah. I mean like really, it jumps out of the glass. This this smells like it's going to be very oily with the long fish. But it's not candy, it's bready sweet. Like like cake sweet, right? There is not a trace of smoke or peat or even earthiness in here. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, it just stays sweet. That is full bodied. Right at the end, it's slightly, it's oily. Mm. Yeah, very clingy, as expected. And as a swallow, that clingy oiliness kind of lingers, and now it gets slightly tannin sour. Yeah. Slight barrel note. The little barrel note shows up at the end there. So, sherried scotch. Yes. You know what it is. McAllen. McAllen. Edition number four from Patrick Cohn. Patrick Cohn, you magnificent. Bastard. <laughs> So edition number four, what is this? This looks like... So they started releasing special editions yeah. with no age statements. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was when there was a lot of people freaking out about, oh, you're removing age statements because you want to be lazy 
and make money without having to wait for things to age, and that's bullshit. It's kind of a cynical way to look at it. But... And uh, what they were saying was, no, no, we're creating flavor profiles we really love, right? and we're just not bothering to worry about the age statement. And a lot of people felt the first release of this yes. was a brilliant example of blending art. Yeah, no, I'm tasting this. Right? It's like, oh, damn. McAllen, I always imagine as being like a really safe, just nice, comfortable whiskey. Yeah. And this is nice, but there is a level of intensity with these flavors where yeah. it's not playing around. It's throwing. Now, they're it's, number it's one. throwing some tea at you. They're number one. They listed every single barrel and what percentages went into the blend. Okay. Uh, if I remember correctly. Number four, I haven't. Uh, actually figured out what they put in this one yet. I haven't really spent the time. I just know what these are, and I wanted to try it anyway. Yeah. Um, but they do, they get very specific about what's in these things. I think this one's really good. No, it's fantastic. Now, it's, I'm going to add a little water. Yes, this is 48.4%. Yeah. So we're going to take it down a little bit. We're not going to do comparisons where this first run at, uh, at a different kind of format. We'll probably figure out a way to fit that in later. But this time, let's just play around with some water. Mm -hmm. Then we'll play around with some ice. And then we'll get a story in there sometime. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. So first thing, right in the nose. Wow. It gets less sweet. Yeah. And more wood spice. Yeah, the wood. It was very, very faint. Very faint on the finish there. This is... Now you're getting that sort of dusty oak. Oh, and it's got a little more bite to it. Yeah. Oh. Pepper. I, I love how that wood came out. The pepper showed up. I love how that wood just like flung itself out right in front of our faces. I'm going to try another dash and see what happens a second time. All up under the nose, Daniel. By the way, this is Patrick Cohn who dropped off like we did this nine time. whiskeys all at once. Oh, oh. Which made him take, technically a patron saint, but I think we're going to let him work his way there. We'll this is there. only the first one we've reviewed. It's all about the journey, Patrick. Yeah. We're going to have this as an organic process. Yeah. Apparently a crap ton of whiskeys. Yeah. All right. Well, it got even, it got slight, the second drop of water got slightly sweeter and a little more musty. Did you add more water to mine? Yeah, just no, no, just mine. Okay. Mm. You know what? This is definitely worth playing around with. Yeah. Water. Two dashes of water in this yes. brought a uh, way more magnificent journey. Absolutely. Not just candy. By itself, it was just sweet and desserty. Absolutely. A few drops of water, more complex, more interesting. Absolutely. Let's get, uh, let's get some ice. All right, so Paul, I brought something for, for this. Like this really, it's a red letter day. It's a milestone. This is an event in the vault. How many times have I asked about ice? And you'd be like, and you'd be like, no, no, nah, I'm not bothering with that. It's such such a big deal. I bought with my own monies some ice tongs oh. that double as I can applaud you. Oh yeah, yay! When you do a good job, tiny little violin for your sorrows. Look at this. Look at this. Let me have one. You want one? Yeah. How about how about a big one? Okay. That's not a big one. All right. You want another? Yeah. This is really bad ice. There we go. Okay. So, you know, do they make countertop ice freezers? Because what I'd really love to do is like a little baby freezer sits in the corner in here with ice molds. And so when we do our ice testing, we use like real chunks of ice molds. Right. Instead of this kind of action. I gotta tell you, these hands. They're not working that great. The worst thing you could put on the edge. <laughs> so, instantly... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Instantly cold. Yeah. Nose is vanished. It's all sweetness now. Oh, it toned down. Sweet and mellow and clingy no, and hold. If, slightly invisible. I think it turned down quite a bit of the sweetness. It's still there, but it did leave me with. Did it oh, leave me, It left me with a little earthiness. Yeah, the taste is all slightly bitter wood and earth, and yeah. none of the cherry fig notes are left in the taste. Wow, that's a different sour and slightly bitter. That's a different whiskey. Here, you can have all it, of that. It muted. <laughs> it really did. It muted like the the rich, vibrant, fruity flavors, yeah. and it left some earthiness that I was not picking up before. And all the bitterness of the I wood. I was not picking up before. Now I have a cold glass, which will affect the whiskey. That's better. Okay, we're back. Um, okay. I have so, a couple of thoughts. Don't do ice unless this happens to fall in your lap. Yeah. You're very new to whiskey. You need something to. But the thing is, ice made it to dull, to rougher. Well, it made the taste rougher. Yeah. But the alcohol. If somebody's coming at whiskey fresh and they don't have whiskey fresh, water it down. Yeah. But don't ice it down. Yeah. This is. Oh, that's gross. So What's the, the next part of the face? Do you have a story? I do. Because there's so, comments. Hold on. Where do we sit? In the I want to sit for stories. Don't make me stand here for stories. We don't have any chairs. Don't make me stand here for stories like a chump. I got a chair. Check this out. With my own monies again. 
the generosity. Can you feel the heat of generosity coming off of you? <laughs> is that what that is? Yes. <laughs> that was, I thought that was lack of showering. No. Oh, it's sort of like right. a director's chair. So I'm going to put a camera somewhere right over here. By the way, it looks a little different. Our camera, the Panasonic GH4 that shot Two years. hundreds of episodes, dead. Came up a ghost. It, it, we started shooting a little earlier today. It's like, no, we're, we're done. <laughs> so I jumped. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting your camera set up. So, oh, this is a wee chair. It's actually surprisingly comfortable. Well, because it's to size. It's got good low, like lumbar support right here. It's all lower back support. Mine's not that great. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's pretty good. Okay, so, just not necessarily the camera position or these exact chairs, although yours your seems to be per perfectly fit to your body. The idea of what's the story time. Okay, settle in. So, settle in. Back settle. in the are 90s. We, are, are you settled? I'm settled. Okay. Yeah. Back in the 90s-ish. Yeah. There was all of a sudden a flood of supposedly just discovered antique whiskeys okay. into the market. Okay. Uh, whiskeys from like the 17 and 1800s. Wow. Showing up in auctions, showing up from Campbelltown distilleries that had been long closed and rare, hard to find. Right. And it began to be a suspicious quantity of them. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so they started an investigation into these things, and it was actually launched by a bunch of fans, essentially, mm -hmm. as opposed to the distillers, people like Dave Broom, mm -hmm. and among others. Uh, they went, you know what? We're going to actually check into this because this is starting to get, so, you know, they're coming in fours of the same bottlings right. and all these things. So they looked into it, and they pretty quickly found some glaring, obvious mistakes. Right. Uh, names like, of distilleries spelled incorrectly. And in Comic Sans. Yeah, and pictures, <laughs> a pencil-drawn picture of a distillery of Talisker on a rare Talisker bottling. Right. But it was of a distillery that was built in the 60s, or 50s or something like that, right. with a 60s-era chimneys, right? Yeah. And it's like, I mean, just obvious things, right? The name of the owner of that era spelled incorrectly. Right. And so um, the ones that were fetching some of the highest prices were McAllen. Yeah. McAllen had spent a lot of money in the early 2000s purchasing a lot of what they considered to be antique bottles. Sure. And they even launched an entire series saying, we're going to try to replicate what we tasted in these antique bottles as new releases. So oh, you can try so what McAllen tasted like. Basing this effort on mm -hmm. stuff that was possibly bogus? Yeah. Ooh. And so the, there was not a lot of research other than that, like, yeah, the bottles were old, and mm -hmm. yes, the paper the labels were on were old. Right. Right? But as I think it was Dave Vernon said at the time, just because you have a 19th century paint uh, canvas and right. a 19th century frame doesn't make it Monet. Yeah. A little bit later, we're like 10 years after that, they finally convince, and McAllen does chemical testing on like a, more than a dozen bottles no. of famous, world-renowned things that were being sold for $10,000 a pour this is McAllen, at Swiss rest this hotels. Is McAllen, basically, who's already started to base the designing of new whiskeys on mm -hmm. something that is suspicious, they are the ones that say, hey, let's go ahead and test this. All right, fine, let's test these. But at the time, some of these were going for like 10 grand a pour. Mm. At famous hotels and things like this, right? Yeah. So they tested, and in in like sixteen, like more than a dozen bottles, yeah. they found it contain to contain post nineteen fifties alcohol, and it turned out that a lot of these things were tied back to Italy, um, to these guys with mafia connections. Hence the uh, typos. It's, it's kind of a cool story, right? Now what we're drinking is really McAllen. Okay, and this is edition number four. Yeah. Just made to be good, not based on anything ancient. Yeah. And that concludes story time. Okay. With Rex and Daniel. Yeah. I, so, how did you like your chair? Oh. <laughs> I was going to give that to my daughter. Don't kick my daughter's chair. All right, get back up here because we're never going to do the toast. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. Fight me, fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may, may you, you drink. drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.